Hello chess friends and welcome to the of Chess Channel and welcome to an ultra aggressive chess game performed by two legends of the sport. Welcome to an amazing game played by Gary Kasparov against Vasily Ivanchuk from the Linares chess event in 1994 in which they played a sharp Botvinnik variation of the Semislav defense. And I think you can write a whole book about the games uh, between Gary Kasparov and Vasily Ivanchuk. Um, sometimes Chucky won the game, sometimes Gary won the games, but uh, it was always a pleasure to watch these two guys playing with such such dirty tricks, traps all over the board, always some tactical sequences, always some uh, great ideas, queen sacrifices, rook sacrifices, decoys, deflections, always, always explosions all over the board. So put your seatbelts on, this game will be also epic uh, here in this uh, Botvinnik variation of the Semislav defense. So let's see now what happened with the white pieces. Gary opened with the move d4, Chucky's response was knight to f6, c4, c6, knight to c3, d5, and now for knight to f3, we have reached now the three knights variation of the Slav defense, and now e6, the Semislav defense. Bishop to g5. Uh, we have now uh, this accepted same slab defense and now after move e4 we have reached now the botvinnik variation and you see now black has uh, this four versus two situation on the queen side has of course a great expansion there but of course the downside for black is that white has now occupied the center and is threatening actually the move e5 uh, here we have b5 uh, which is still a uh, main line uh, perfectly fine nothing lost because even if uh, white plays now the move e5 like got it played now still you have this resource h six bishop to h4 and then you continue with g5 allow this tactic with knight to g5 h take g5 and after bishop to g5 we're now in the standard line this position has been played many many times uh, with good success for white with the good success for black with many drawish games but nothing lost for black black and as i said still hold this position with knight to d7 and okay you see now uh, white needs now to capture the piece back but has now the issue that the the attack is a little bit splashed on this side of the board and actually black will never castle of course on this side of the board uh, because you have already too many weaknesses on this side of the board so the main strategic goal for black is actually to castle queen side and then play something like bishop to b7 and then you attack maybe here uh, white if white castles of course king side so it becomes so, such an unbalanced game with so many good ideas for white, with so many good ideas for black. Very complicated to play, but has been played, as I said, many, many times in chess history. Bishop to b7 by Chucky immediately. G3. Gotti wants to compete now against this bishop, and now comes c5. Again, a move that has been played many, many times. But you don't want to tolerate, of course, this diagonal play now d5. This is now a good move here by Gotti. What should you do? If you play here e takes d5, this is not working because of queen to e2 immediately wins the game. Obviously, you have to cover and it's game over. So that's why for d5, knight to f6 by uh, Vasily Ivanchuk and now bishop to g2. Finally, Gary is competing against this unpleasant bishop on b7. And again, let's see options for, for black. Black cannot, of course, take this uh, uh, pawn with the knight because of the pin. If you try here something like e takes d5, this wouldn't be again good because of queen to e2. If you cover with queen to e7, first of all, we pick up the uh, knight here and you cannot uh, take it out because of the action on the e-file. You have to trade off the queens, but white is continuing the game, of course, with an extra piece. We have here, if you try here b4, instead of uh, e takes d5, then queen to uh, a4 is very dangerous. And then you have to play something like queen to d7, then we pick up this one. This one is still protected by... Um, uh, by the knight and again i would say game over here for black so that's why for bishop to g2 uh, chucky played bishop to h6 he doesn't want to tolerate anymore uh, this unpleasant bishop on g5 but now gary plays a beautiful sideline bishop takes f6 no he doesn't play bishop takes h6 he's saying this bishop on h6 is actually not so dangerous the knight is more flexible in this position somehow so that's why for bishop to f6 queen to f6 Gotti secures the king by castling but has now a great tension here around the square d5 he's controlling the square and he's trying of course if something clears here on the e file to play rook to uh rook to uh e1 and then of course mess up uh the structure in front of the king so that's why uh, chucky played queen side casting now Gotti kasparov played knight to b5 and now believe me or not already already a tiny little mistake here by uh Vasily Ivanchuk he played maybe an unnecessary here e takes d5 seems tempting but you allow here knight takes a7 maybe uh, a better choice is to play here a6 
uh, kick away the knight and then after something like knight to c3 uh, you can play now maybe e takes d5 still it's very dangerous because the knight is still coming no good squares attacking this one attack, attacking the dark squares here but i think you can survive maybe with bishop to c6 and this position has been played also many times in chess history with many drawish outcomes so better maybe choice to play a6 uh, or if you here play here bishop to d5 this wouldn't be good here for for black because of queen to a4 and then you're getting simply destroyed around the square a7 e takes d5 as i said maybe tiny little inaccurate move here by uh Vasi Vanchuk, which allows here gary kasparov to take knight takes a7 king to b8 and now gary simply retreat but what uh Vasi Vanchuk had in mind was a different kind of approach he wanted he didn't want to go probably he's probably familiar with this uh a6 move but he wanted to create an attack himself in this very very dynamic position and he played on the move bishop to g7 he's saying okay you have your knight there on b5 but I'm the one that are attacking now. Uh, I'm. I will try to attack now your h2 weakness. Gary Kasparov says, "Okay, show me what you got and play now a counter attack on a4." So you see, the position is really stretched all over the board, a really unbalanced, a really wild, wild um, a position now to play for both sides. Uh, here, Chucky continues with queen to h6, continues now the attacking flow on the h file, but now Gary Kasparov stops uh, the attack at least for a while with the move h4, and now. Vasi Vanchuk, again, I would say, doesn't react correctly. He plays now the unnecessary move f6. He's trying his tactic with bishop takes h4 and then maybe to do some dangerous stuff here uh, on the h file, but actually a better choice is to play f5. f5 and then f4 to try somehow to split the pawn chain in front of, um, in front of white king, maybe include also this other rook into the game, but this would be the best move, trying to put more pressure against white king in a different way not with bishop to f6 gary kasparov probably thought okay maybe he can take a bishop takes h4 but still i have this defensive resource rook to e1 and then king to f1 you cannot checkmate me if i play rook to e1 and then king to f1 so that's why gary calculated this position in a good way he says you don't have anything I have something here for you queen to e1 and i'll get my queen now on a5 this is now great counterattack here by gary kasparov allows here bishop to h4 by basli vanchuk now he has it is this intermediate attack he's threatening of course uh queen to a7 bishop to e7 by basli vanchuk threatening the checkmate immediately but as i said after queen to uh, c7 queen to a8 queen to a5 after a couple of repetitions uh gary kasparov uh, has this defensive resource with rook to e1 this was a great great choice by gary because queen to h2 here doesn't bring you anything you don't have any further checks you had your fun with one check but really not a checkmate threat so that's why after rook to e1 uh, vas ivanchuk tried bishop to d6 he doesn't want to tolerate now the queen on c7 uh, gary kasparov continues with queen to b6 and now bishop to b8 and okay uh, here you see bishops are very active here by by black especially if you play d4 but you have yourself here an endangered king so actually gary kasparov again evaluated the position in a good way he says again you don't have nothing here you don't attack me at all here i'm the one that i'm on, on the attacking side he plays now the beautiful a5 and you see now even if you try i don't know something like queen to b6 if you try to trade off the queens then a takes b6 is simply winning the game you have to bring some bishops here uh, to cover yourself and you can resign i think after a couple more moves so that's why for a5 rook to d7 uh here vasa ivanchuk is trying to hold the position of the seventh rank but now comes another stunner here by um uh, gary kasparov here gary played such a such a beautiful move maybe just for fun pause the video and try to see now the best idea uh here for um uh for, for white very tough to see i would say in such an open battle but of course gary was always a great tactician he found i think uh this move very very easy so what would you do now in this particular position <laughs> okay here gary played the beautiful rook to e8 uh, deflecting of course the rook from the defense of the queen this move rook to e8 forces basically the reaction with the move queen to h2 and the beautiful part about this move queen to h2 is that actually vas ivanchuk prepared uh, the whole attack with the idea of queen to h2 but now the queen to h2 move 
is simply getting the queen too far away from the action the queen is not used as a defensive piece anymore here on this side of the board so it becomes now almost impossible for for uh, black to defend this position god says okay you don't have anything i have this resource king to off one and even if you try here now rook takes e8 the issue is now the winning move is a6 you're trying maybe to escape but then with your attack and uh, the knight is controlling the AS a7 score you have to now again bring the piece back here and uh, again after a takes b7 game over simply here for black really really beautiful calculations by gary kasparov so that's why vas ivanchuk played now the only move that lets him lets him uh, survive at least for a while he plays now queen takes g2 but after king takes g2 uh here finally uh vasa ivanchuk liberated uh the light square bishop but you can guess what god is doing he's playing now queen takes b7 uh here we have uh rook takes b7 but now the rook on a uh, on h8 is hanging and that was the beauty about the sequence that gary kasparov prepared really really stunning 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 calculations by the legendary beast from baku and now for rook to b5 okay you're down the exchange in some other positions you could play this position and you still have enough pawns as a compensation but the issue is that this pawn is marching and there's simply no good way to escape anymore uh, with your king king to a7 was played by Basti Ivanchuk, but now gary goes for this one and the rook cannot be brought into the defense on f5 to defend this and you can no you cannot also bring it here to the defense on b7 uh really really I think that Gary Kasparov saw all of that uh, without complications, I would say, because his tactical sequences through, through his career were, were really amazing. Uh, here after rook to uh, f8, rook takes b2. Okay, you have some pawns that are rolling here, but it's a little bit too slow. Rook to f7, uh, king to a8, a7, and now in this particular position it was game over. c3 was played by uh, Vasily Vanchuk, but even if you play here, bishop to x7, the issue is after rook to a7 you're trying to escape now we're trying to deliver checkmate uh, and you may be trying to escape from this by covering yourself but then you get this one again at an attack you're trying to repeat moves we pick up this one you're starting maybe to push some pawns here but then again we threaten checkmate you have to again bring the king closer now we again threaten checkmate and there's simply no good way to include anymore the rook into the defense game over here for black so after a7 uh chucky tried c3 but now rook to f8 and it was game over after king to b7 vasily vanchuk resigned so of course uh, we'll simply promote and it will be game over so incredible incredible uh attack by uh, gary kasparov he wasn't really uh so so shocked i think by this attacking uh formation that uh, vasily vanchuk created he's gary kasparov's strength i think was always in the possibility of a counter attack he notices better his opportunities than just i don't know lean back and hope for the best and defend the position somehow he 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 always created madness himself and that's why he was of course one of the best chess players of all time so great game by gary but also great game by chucky brave decision to go into this attack uh, if you want to see some other spectacular chess games like this check out our best chess games of all time series and if you want to see even more uh, aggressive sharper brutal tactical chess check out our content chess games played by computers and if you like this content hit the subscribe button see you soon with some more videos and what do we say in the end chess is the best, of course.